Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide and another very crowded bench. A good friend lent me this rifle. We went out and shot it, and I'll put just a couple uh, video clips of us shooting in the end. But this is a K31 Swiss uh, carabiner or carbine rifle uh, in 7.5 millimeter Swiss. Just a beautiful gun. Uh, and I thought I'd share a little bit about the uniqueness of this rifle. It's supposed to be, and it depends, you know, who you talk to, but it's certainly one of the absolute finest rifles of its era. This one was made in 1940, and when he got it, the stock, uh, in his own words, was like they tried to drive fence posts with it. But what a beautiful job of stripping it down, steaming out all the scratches and dents, and then refinishing it. I mean, just a beautiful, beautiful job. The wood looks almost brand new. Amazing. Now, one of the really interesting things to me is the quality of finish of the metal for this gun. It's this old. So this is now uh, 80, what, 83 years old. And look at the metal on that. I'm sure it's a little hard to tell with the lighting here. But just amazing um, finish and, and condition here on this on this rifle. So a testimony to the quality of the build. Everything is extremely tightly tolerance. It still moves like it's brand new. I mean, the action is just amazing. Now, if you're also not familiar with this action, it's a straight pull mechanism. And I'll have to reposition here in a second. I'll show you how that works. But uh, it's got a rotating bolt assembly. So instead of when we close a normal rifle, we re-rotate the handle down, which locks the lugs up into the back of the barrel and the action. Um, this one does it by rotating the bolt as you close. So there's a pin and a cam that causes this thing to rotate. And we'll, we'll look at that again in a minute. But I thought I'd show you just sort of an initial view of it because it's such a beautiful, beautiful gun and very interesting mechanism. Uh, this is the safety. You pull it back and then um, you can turn it 90 degrees and that will keep the firing pin from going forward. So that's how that works. Pretty simple, pretty fast to get a hold of. Uh, what does it shoot? Well, it shoots around called a 7.5 millimeter Swiss. Now, we're going to open this box. And I checked the owner. He goes, yeah, no problem. Open it up. But this is now really rare and getting expensive ammunition because the factory that makes this shut down. They'll no longer be making these cartridges. And this has their own proprietary powder and bullet design, etc., that you just can't get now. Um, and so it unfortunately is out of production. There's been some rumors that another company might start up production um, And we'll see if they ever do that One other thing that I've been noticing and a little bit of research I've been doing on is there is a modern version And I'm sure you can't see this real well k31.ch And that is the website you can look at and they're making a modern version of this action in a modern chassis and ergonomic features so I think that's interesting, and that shows the value of the straight pull design and the inherent accuracy and rigidity of this uh, bolt and lockup. It's really pretty amazing. Um, one thing in the background here, take a look at that. I mean, you talk about, let me put up your locals, that is a dagger. And it's also, you can be used as a hand knife, right? So if you get into fighting hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, well, that's available too. But what a dagger. I'll pull the shield off here again, and we'll take a look. So it's reposition. We'll take a look at this, the ammo, and the action. All right, a little bit closer look now. Let's start with the ammunition. Here is a fired piece of this brass, and here, of course, is the brand-new package. I just opened it up, and how it's packaged. It's interesting. It's packaged every other one flipped uh, in the casing. Now, if you can see that well... This is what's really unique. One, the powder, the combination. They have really highly developed this for accuracy. Uh, and it is um, one of the most accurate rounds um, for any cartridge or any rifle of this type. But this is factory ammo. And they did, you know, typical Swiss, right? Incredible machinery. But they didn't stop machining. But they didn't stop there. And they kept going with the ammo. And then the profile and the ogive and the taper and the sweep forward of that bullet point is uh, something else. It's different than most other rifles. Very, very streamlined, very, very low drag. And so it carries a lot of energy down range. And I think it was 7.5 millimeter. What does that mean? That was their designation in general. The bullet's actually a 308 diameter. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's, that's really what we're looking at. It's, a, it's another variant of a 308 type cartridge, but it has a lot of punch. Uh, as I understand it, the ballistics fall somewhere between a 308 and 30-06 but it's more efficient. So down range, it can carry more energy. And that's just from some information I looked up. I haven't actually chronographed this round. 
but um, brand new, well, brand new. This is military rounds, and it's amazingly accurate. Not the typical M1 ball kind of stuff, right? Um, or, uh, you know, general ammunition for the military use. Very, very precise ammo. But uh, interesting packaging, I thought. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to fire any of this. We're going to give that back to him. Uh, he already let me fire several rounds through it before. Now, take a look at this dagger. I mean, what a piece of workmanship on its own. You know, I know it's really hard to get in view here, but what a intimidating weapon as well. Now, this is also, you know, I, I call it a dagger, right? It's, it's really a bayonet, but it can be used, and it's designed to be used in your hand. And so as hand-to-hand -hand battle goes, often in war, right, sometimes, hey, this may be more convenient than wielding a big rifle around. And so they could pull it off and use it that way. It's spring-loaded here. Uh, really just simple mechanism for popping on to the end of the rifle and latching on to the front of the barrel. And then um, there's a guide rod that comes up into here that's got a, I don't know if you can see that well, a T-slot. So that slides up in there, then this locks. And uh, simple mechanism, fast to take off. But very, very cool uh, um, bayonet dagger and very incredible quality, especially considering his age. This thing is just amazing and a beautiful thing. So that goes back to him too. It, it, it's really hard, it's gonna be really hard for me to return this gun and this dagger. All right, so um, that's it for the for the a quick look at the ammunition, very simple look at the bayonet, etc. Here is the action, and so let's take a look at it. Now, as I mentioned, it is a straight pull action, and it's cock on open. So the, the gun is fired in position because this is forward. When this is back, it's armed. And again, I mentioned the safety. You take his back, rotate it 90 degrees, and it locks then the, the safety, or excuse me, it locks it out of position to where it can't be fired. You see this, I don't know if you all see that, but it's against the backside of that action. And so that means safety can't be fired. But then you drop it forward, and that hammer is forward now, and, well, excuse me, let me get that back in position. There we go. Uh, and then it would fire. But unlike American rifles, typically, or a lot of other rifles anyway, we cock um, when we close the rifle. This cocks the firing pin on open. So it's kind of a stiff pullback. It's smooth, but it's stiff. But then it's really smooth going forward. So you spend your energy doing that. And then you come forward. And I've, I don't have a round in here, so you have to push the magazine down. But um, you come forward then, and the bolt will go forward, and it locks in place. And again, you're ready to fire. Um, but that mechanism, let's see if I can get it to go back slowly enough here. You can see it rotate. If you can watch this line, uh, you'll see it rotate. And that's that bolt cocking back and opening up and arming the trigger again, but also rotating the lugs. And so now when we go forward, it drops in, rotates back, and the lugs are locked forward into position. A really cool mechanism. Straight pull, straight back in, and, uh, you know, away you go. Um, it's got an internal box magazine. It is detachable, although you don't really need to detach it. They're fed with stripper clips too. Uh, so that's pretty simple. Um, and then of course our bolt release is here and out comes the bolt. And now you can see that rotating mechanism. This cam pin rides in here rotating the bolt. This rides in the receiver so this doesn't move. And then the cam uh, causes the bolt to rotate the lugs, unlock them, and then lock them back into position as it goes forward. So uh, very simple, very, very strong action. Uh, and it's held up uh, historically really well. And that's why there's still a company yet producing this action. Now, I understand they did uh, a couple different versions of that modern one I showed you the picture of. Um, and they're coming out with a second gen of it. It says Q1, I believe it was, of 2024. So it should be coming up pretty soon. Um, we'll see how close they hit that delivery, etc. But it's a pretty cool, modern-looking uh, rifle, but with this mechanism. And why? Well, one, it's cool, it's straight pull back, but it's really strong, and it does improve some areas potentially for accuracy. The gun, like I say, is very, very accurate. Now, can I say this is accurate, more accurate than my uh, Springfield that you've seen on the channel? I don't know, probably is. Hey, the problem is with my old eyes, right? I'm looking through open sights. You put a good scope on there, I can tell you a lot more uh, about that. But for sure, uh, it's it's uh, followed through and it's, um, 
follow through. Other people have done a lot of testing and say this is probably the most accurate of the bolt action rifles in the war eras. Now, this is the this is the a sight for it. Very strong spring, uh, holds it up in position. Uh, you have a sight you look through here down for closer ranges, but for longer ranges you have the ladder sight. Uh, something like a Wellington, but not quite that complex. But the mechanism is just really simple and really solid. You have a little spring you push in here, a button you push in here, and you just lock on to the tab you want based on the yardage that you want. And so very, very simple to do. You can do it like that, get it ready, pop it up, and away you go. So uh, simple mechanism, but still really well made. And look at that, you know, uh, what did it say? It was 83 years later this mechanism perfect um, so quite a testimony to the machining the quality of the steels the heat treatments and the design itself so anyway i thought you'd like to see that it's just a really really cool mechanism um, and how it works uh, you don't see these a lot um, they used to be more common more available there are some that occasionally come up i believe aim surplus had some recently you can't believe how tempted i was to buy this um, i resisted for now. <laughs> but this is just such a cool weapon and cool rifle. Uh, so anyway, I hope you like this. I'll put in a couple, uh, just a few seconds of us shooting it at the range. You can kind of see that. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, give me a like and subscribe. Maybe we'll get the owner of this rifle back out and we'll do some chronograph testing and things like that in the future. Well, before we go, I decided, hey, why not pull out the trigger pull gauge? And let's see what uh, you know, an 83-year-old rifle trigger is like. And so, um, just for all the people know it's safe, right? There's no round in there. There's no magazine out there. It's out, too. And so, we'll lock it forward. And let's take a look here about what we get for a trigger pull. And it's a military trigger, but I find it particularly smooth. A big take-up, but then when you hit that wall, it's a pull. But there we go. Four pounds, two ounces. Let's try it again. You can do this by just cocking the hammer in the back by pulling the ring there. And let's try it again. Four pounds, 1.2 ounces. And one more time. <clears throat> Four pounds, two ounces. Uh, amazingly consistent trigger. That's more than acceptable. Uh, four, point, or four pounds, 1.8 ounces. That's a, that's a good trigger, a very good trigger. And again, it's a very clean, you come back to a nice wall and then a nice clean break. Uh, so for a military trigger, I'm really impressed. That's awesome.